Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. And joining us now is Norman Solomon. He's featured in the film War Made Easy, How Presidents and Pundits Keep Spinning Us to Death. And he's on the National Board of Progressive Democrats of America. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks a lot. So you were recently on C-SPAN, and you wrote a piece a little while ago about the nomination of Kagan to the Supreme Court. And you come from, as I said, Progressive Democrats of America. Your critique of President Obama is getting scathing. Uh, tell us why. Well, I think the progressive critique of Obama is getting scathing because the Obama administration is more and more moving towards policies that many who worked to elect Obama as president have opposed in recent years. And so there's a, a split developing not because people don't want to support a Democrat in the White House, not even because people don't want to support Obama, but because the policies, whether it's uh, war, the environment, the economy, civil liberties, out of the White House, increasingly unacceptable. Okay, now when, when you interview someone who still supports President Obama, and, and that's still a majority of Democrats, um, and even in the country, he's still getting you know somewhere around the 50 percent, 50 percent plus uh, approval ratings, and if you take out the oil spill, which people don't seem to think he's doing very well on, is the ratings go up a little more. Uh, talk about some of the specifics bec uh, that, that you think he's not delivering on. Yeah, well, I think we need to get beyond the binary light on or light off. It's always compared to what? I mean, the specifics are increasingly grim. Uh, continued escalation of the war in Afghanistan. Again, a supplemental now being moved through Congress to appropriate off the books, even though we were told a year ago the one then would be off the books in terms of funneling many billions of dollars into the war um, from the Congress. Uh, so there's the war escalation, which is fundamental. And although Obama can make a lot of sense when he talks about war and not polarizing with uh, uh, those of the Islamic faith and so forth, it's the actual policy we've got to look at, where the troops are going, how the money's being spent. Uh, when you look at the economy, you have a situation where the Democratic Party establishment has rebonded with Wall Street. The reforms have been minimal. The reality is we have had foreclosures across this country. We've had enormous bailouts for Wall Street. We don't have, as the cliche goes, Main Street being improved. And on the night that Obama was elected president, he said in that you know, beautiful scene uh, in the stadium in Chicago uh, that it would not be sufficient to have Wall Street flourish if Main Street did not. Well, that's precisely uh, what has happened. And to have the, the Geithners and the Summers and so forth in the top policy positions is telling, not because of their own background, but most importantly because of the policies that we're getting and not getting. And that's about jobs. I mean, jobs is absolutely crucial by any definition to the well-being of the country and the capacity to generate revenue in a way that is positive for uh, government uh, policy and expenditures. You want to have taxes coming from people who actually are working, and to have such a high unemployment rate and the fatalism out of the White House is the worst kind of fatalism for other people. It's not those folks are going to be millionaires who come out of the White House, but the fatalism is that other people are going to suffer the slow death in some cases of joblessness. So I think that is crucial as well. We're not getting nearly as big of a stimulus package, and I think what we are getting is sort of Republican light policies. What a concept. We're going to create jobs by giving tax breaks to businesses okay, rather now, than now, jobs programs through the government. Now, the counter argument you get from the Obama camp is that this is where America is at. Like, this is as good as you're going to get in well, terms of pushing yeah. something because the alternative of the Republican position is so much worse. So what do you, how do you deal with it? Well, right? there's something called leadership. I mean, uh, where the country was at was largely racist and Jim Crow in 1964. And Lyndon Johnson pushed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act in 1965 and the Office of Economic Opportunity and the uh, War on Poverty. That's where the country was, was quote unquote, at. But it was also at, from a groundswell, enormous progressive inclinations. Uh, and there was a willingness from the White House, in those areas anyway, uh, to lead. You take civil liberties again. Uh, enormous powers are vested in the Oval Office right now. And the president has replicated the policies of the previous president. It should just be unacceptable. You know, this is not sort of a rhetorical flourish. When you come to basic Bill of Rights matters, uh, you have our president today, President Obama, replicating uh, the policies uh, of President Bush to the point that the executive director of the ACLU, uh, Anthony Romero, a couple of weeks ago, said that the current President Obama civil liberties policies, quote, disgusted him, unquote. Well, that tells you how bad things are. Okay, so w w each one of these things could be dug into 
and at some point I think we should do a show where we you can debate someone who defends the Obama administration uh, and, and on these issues. Uh, but I want to kind of jump past it for a moment and kind of get at what are you going to do about it. And uh, There's a quote that I use, and people that watch The Real News know I, I've quoted this uh, gentleman uh, maybe a hundred times, and I, and I probably will continue to for hundred more times. Uh, George Will said on, on the ABC show, George Stephanopoulos, when he was hosting it uh, this week, uh, Will says essentially in elections you don't get to choose whether the elite's going to rule or not you get to choose which section of the elite is going to rule. The, the, the issue of who runs America and the issue of class, uh, you know, when there's an election on, they're for the middle class. So there's actually, all of a sudden during election campaigns, there is such a thing as a class society in the United States, except there's only one, there's the middle, there's never an upper and a lower. But there is such a thing. Uh, to what extent do progressive Democrats, in a broad sense of the word, not the organization, bear some of the responsibility for President Obama and who he is in the sense that they didn't talk honestly or, or, or they themselves kind of bought into the illusion that this was something other than just another section of the elite. You know, if you want, call it the liberal elite. Well, there's no doubt that if social change is going to happen, it's going to come from the grassroots. It will be reflected electorally uh, in union organizing and all kinds of at-the-base work that has to be done. To the extent people have let Obama off the hook and figured now we have somebody in office who we can trust, uh, and people have done that to a great extent, who voted for him, many who worked for him. That's been a terrible mistake and always will be, no matter who is president. I mean, I was an Obama delegate to the Democratic National Convention from Northern California, and I said at the outset uh, that it would be a terrible mistake to trust in Obama. I think it's always a matter of not pinning your faith on any individual, but investing your energy and your hopes in realistic terms but there's in a building a movement. Th there's a formulation I hear all the time. That people, they, they quote Roosevelt saying, I want to do this, but sure. you're going to have to push make, me. Make me do it. Yeah, yeah but that, that actually suggests there actually really is the intent there. And this guy's the president. If he had the intent, there's things he can do without people pushing him. Well, given the centrist inclinations of the president, and as Cornell West, who has been a backer of uh, Barack Obama, has said, Obama is a corporate politician. He's certainly much better, I believe, than the George W. Bush variety. But the differential is, uh, given that he continues to try to seek the center of political gravity, how much progressives at the base can change that political gravity in our direction. And in the absence of us doing that effectively, uh, the president and the executive branch and the legislative branch, and for that matter, the Supreme Court, are going to slide in a rightward direction, which is what's been happening in recent months. But, but when he has critical choices to make, where he could do better from a progressive point of view and take the Kagan nomination to the Supreme Court, I mean, what do you make of that nomination? Well, that nomination objectively, I believe, moves the court to the right, which is counterintuitive, but the reality is that uh, Kagan is not nearly as strong for civil liberties as the justice who she will replace, uh, Justice Stevens. And that is a conscious choice uh, by the president. I think it's a tragedy. Well, when he chose his economic team, he chose a Wall Street Goldman Sachs economic team. Right. His first big nomination or second nomination, I'm sorry, now I'm going to have to edit this. First or second? I can't remember now. This is his second, second nomination? I believe second, so, yes. yeah, second okay. nomination, yeah, because right. the other one was the, yeah. Okay. So his second nomination to the Supreme Court is a, is a centrist or even right of center Democrat with a, a, not a very good record on uh, civil rights issues. Uh, we just found out she, she had a particular role in keeping the Cuban Five in jail. She actually went out of her way to make sure that the, uh, the people uh, charged with spying mm -hmm. on Cuban terrorists in Miami are now doing life sentences, are going to stay in jail. Um, do, I mean, do we not, or do progressives who want more out of him and the Democratic Party, don't, don't you need to stop making an issue of either one, pushing him, and two, uh, losing the kind of c character that he represents, a section of the elite. We're not just talking about one guy who may believe this or may believe that. And then what are you going to do about it in terms of the Democratic Party? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to organize. I mean, something I said during the 08 campaign, I said in writing many times, and it still bears repeating, I think. Uh, the best way not to become disillusioned is to not have illusions in the first place. And I think that's true now as it was then, uh, that the way social change and political uh, policy shifts happen in this country is when uh, people in elite positions feel the pressure. 
Uh, but it's not just an abstraction. The pressure has to come from below, and I believe it has to be reflected in electoral results. And one critique, well, two I would make of progressives. First, way too trusting of a Democrat in the White House, whether the name is Clinton or Obama, uh, and deferential, therefore, and leaving it to them to frame the issues and pursue the initiatives. And a second problem is that progressives have given short shrift to the electoral arena. It matters who has state power. We've seen that again and again. It matters when you've got a Bush or another Bush or uh, a Reagan uh, in the Oval Office, and it matters whether you, if you have a Clinton and an Obama in the office. And it could matter if we had not only more progressive people in Congress and someday in the White House, but especially if they are tied to social movements because they got there, because they're not just skimming for votes and pandering uh, in the election campaign, but they are organically linked. And what's an example of that? Well, in Chicago, how was Harold Washington elected uh, and then reelected as mayor? It's because he came out of a social movement, so therefore his term as mayor of Chicago was much more meaningful. Well, in the next segment of our interview, let's talk about the dilemma. The Democratic Party, whatever the rhetoric during the campaign, it winds up being controlled more or less by corporate Democrats. On the other side, you have the possibility of right-wing sociopaths. So in every election, people say, oh my god, we, we can't let the sociopaths take power again. And they wind up in backing the corporate Democrats. So how are you going to break that uh, dilemma? And please join us for Norman Solomon's answer to that on the next segment on The Real News Network.